Celebrity makeup artist Sebastian Tardif's work has taken him to New York, London, Los Angeles, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and beyond. For more than 25 years, he has led innovation for many global luxury brands and has beautified celebrities including Naomi Campbell, Nelly Furtado, Jane Fonda, Olivia Palmero, and Glenn Close, just to name a few. Casual. Um, He has led makeup direction for more than 100 fashion week shows in New York and internationally, and his signature illuminated makeup has appeared in Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Elle Magazine, and more. He is the creative director of Veil Cosmetics, renowned for its textural, textural superiority and a cult favorite amongst beauty experts and professionals. Now, Sebastian. Whew. All right. That was, that was an intro. We like yes. it. We like Thank to you, hear Kelly. it. Welcome to the pod. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That was really, uh, it's always uh, fun to, to, to hear somebody else talk about, you know, my resume. And, uh, and, and you know, it's always a little, you know, it's a peculiar, mm-hmm. but I, I take it and I'm grateful and I'm humbled. Thank you. You bet. So you're here today. We've got a lot to unpack. Um, but first, we're going to start with you are nearing, approaching at a, around 25 years in the industry. But we yes. want to know, how did it start? Let's start at the beginning. All right. Let's get into time machine, <laughs> Kelly, shall we? <laughs> well, I mean, it all began with um, a passion for fine arts. So I uh, signed up for fine arts. I always loved fine arts, you know, in high school and and went to a university and signed up for a um, a, a, a bachelor degree in in fine arts, major in studio arts, which means that I make painting my sort of uh, favorite medium. And I soon enough became obsessed with painting portraits, but with a bit of that sort of um, abstract touch, not just like a little portrait, like, you know, we have photography for that. But I wanted to always so like to just get a more of a feeling and a mood and texture into my paintings. And it was always about portraits. I always loved playing mm. with light and the shadow and, and the texture. But I soon realized that the life of a solo artist in the studio was going to be a very, very um, quiet life, you know, yeah. waiting for the, you know, vernissage and the, you know, the art gallery opening to meet people and socialize. And that I really soon realized that that was not going to be for me. Like I was at a stage in my life where I felt really like, you know, rebunctious and very social. And we didn't have social media back in the 90s. So mm-hmm. we had to go out there and meet people and go out and club and go to bars and, you know, and it was just very exciting. And so so I had this sort of like just a position of like the soloist artist or the social life. But at the same time, I developed a passion for fashion. I was like in the in the um, magazine stores when they abounded, you know, back in the day. Right. And I would just be that, that kid in the corner sifting through all the magazines and just like, you know, I didn't have that much money, but I would always indulge in like maybe one or two magazines here and there. And I would love, you know, the, the glossies for like the, the, the editorials, the beauty tutorials and the fashion editorials. And I don't know if you remember, but uh, there was a great television show at the time called Fashion Television with Jeannie Becker. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yep. she would be the first one that actually started going backstage and interviewing everybody so from cool. the models and the designers and the makeup artists, and and I was just fascinated, like just uh, enthralled by being there with her and seeing what she did. And I thought, wow, I would love one day to access that world, you know. But mm-hmm. you know. I knew I didn't, I didn't want to be a fashion designer. You know, I love shopping, but you know, there's a big difference between creating clothes and, you know, <laughs> and loving shopping. And, and I knew that being a solo artist, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the studio was also going to be boring. So when I, I had an epiphany one day, you know, fashion, painting portraits, mm. makeup. So mm-hmm. I never looked back. I literally enrolled myself into a, a makeup class and, um, you know, I, I wanted to learn everything about being a makeup artist, knowing that I wanted to work at Fashion Week okay. and, you know, work in, in, on the fashion side and the beauty side of the makeup, not in, not in special effects, not in cinema, not television. I wanted to work in the fashion world of, of makeup. And, you know, I, I dreamt big and I, I got, you know, most of what <laughs> I, I dreamt for. So I always tell people, you know, the bigger the dreams, you know, the better you might end up, you know, uh, evolving. So I love that. That's a great, great narrative to get you 
started, right? And kind of your first kickoff in, in the industry. So when you started and you're like, okay, here's my North Star. It is New York Fashion Week. I've got to be in the mix. Was there any advice that you received from a mentor along the way or, you know, some a colleague that helped you at early on in your career? Zero. Nothing. Oh, okay. I was not surrounded by makeup <laughs> artists, friends. Uh, and I would have loved that. Like, frankly, like, and I would be the first one to give like, you know, credits where it's due. But really in terms of, of getting there, that was the scariest part, Kelly. It's yeah. really being a kid, you know, early in my career, early 20s, and really like going like this with my eyes closed and trying to figure <laughs> out how am I going to get there? Because I mean, I'm Canadian. So I was based at the time in Montreal. Then I moved okay. to Toronto. For, you know, because English is not my first language, and you know, my hear my accent here and there. My <laughs> French is my first language, so so I had the language hurdle on mm-hmm. top of that. Yes, I could have gone to French Paris, you know, Paris <laughs> Fashion Week, but you know, that's one part of the world. But no, I was also like really uh, a big fan of New York City. So okay. so my first step in someone was like, okay, let's learn English first, and I will move to Toronto and then get my sort of my career started there because I knew if I stayed back home that it, it gets harder to move and to mm-hmm. to take your uh, your bag and leave because you're starting to create you know a, a web of contacts yeah. and the deeper the web the harder it is to leave all of that and early on in my career I had nothing to lose so so that's kind of like something that I realized on my own okay and then knowing that no I needed to perfect my English then I sort of like struggled my way through and how I ended up getting to New York Fashion Week and work backstage. And, you know, I've, I've directed over a hundred fashion shows, you know, whether wow. in New York or, or in Asia is truly, you know, I, I, I think one of the, con- the, the, um, the advice I could give to a starting makeup artist that's, you know, maybe still studying is really work in the stores, you know, go work in mm. department store, yeah. go work in, in a, in a drug store. And you're going to learn, you know, with real faces, with real women, real people, real advice, mm. You know, you're going to learn as you are helping these women figuring out what they need in terms of, of makeup and recommendation. That was my biggest learning sort okay. of, you know, uh, curve. And and yes, I did go to a, a makeup school. Okay. And I think that you know, it varies, you know, with the experience. But for me, it was more like, okay, so let's look at the menu of, you know, types of makeup that can be done, you know, with cinema, television, special effects, mm-hmm. theater. Uh, beauty, bridal, and knowing all the mediums, but also, you know, which one are you going to like? I had a chance yeah. to know what I wanted before I hit the school. So I only had like, I have tunnel vision. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know, you get exposed to everything. And that's the beauty of going to a makeup school. Otherwise, you know, launch yourself out there and go and assist people. But if you don't know anybody in the industry, that's hard to figure out. Who are you mm-hmm. going to assist for free? You know, even if you want to do it for free, who are you going to assist if you don't know anybody from the industry? So for me, it was the embryo that it was necessary to go to a makeup school so that I had somewhat of an exposure because then the teacher okay. would have like little little recommendations or maybe little jobs to begin with, you know, like, oh, we know we need a couple of makeup artists to do Halloween makeup, you know? Uh-huh. And it's that little web that starts to sort of, you know, get out there. And that's really how it all happened to me. So then I moved to Toronto. I started working at uh, a department store there and, and really sort of set the tone for where I was going to end up. And then, you know, starting with like prestige beauty makeup, um, really sort of gave me a vision. I was not working drugstore. I was not working with, and not that I didn't want to, I just ended up having, you know, the equivalent of working at like Saks or, 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 Holt or, uh, Neiman's and, or okay. Bergdorf in, in Canada, it's called Holt Renfrew. And so it's a very high end store where, you know, you have all the best of the best and the, you know, top notch, uh, makeup, uh, brands. And that's where I sort of like learn on the go. And then you start meeting people. Then I started doing bridals on the weekend, having little, okay. you know, wedding contracts and, and it all builds bit by bit. And I think that you just have to sort of read the room. And I was never, I was never turning down a job offer. So okay. I was working seven days a week. You know, I had an mm-hmm. opportunity to work in, in television at the same time because mm. the equivalent of MTV in Toronto was much music. And there was a big building where fashion television, actually full circle moment, I ended <laughs> up doing Jeannie Becker's makeup for fashion television. Dang. At 
All I right. Like very, very, uh, <laughs> so I was like uh, practically shaking. Oh, and <laughs> want to hear a fun story? Yes. Because I want to know uh, about a gig. Like, what is what is the best one? What's what you remember? I want the story. So I'm doing Jeannie Becker's makeup. I was hired to do her <laughs> makeup and she couldn't be nicer. Super sweet lady. And she's talking on the phone and then I'm doing her makeup. So I have the concealer, you know, in my hand and I'm, you know, doing her makeup. But then her hair was in the way. So I went to sort of like swoop away <laughs> the hair. And then I come back and there was no concealer left on my hand. It was <laughs> in her hair. So Jeannie, if you're listening to this podcast, I apologize. I did my best to remove it unbeknownst to you. But I was mortified. And I thought I'll never get to do her makeup ever again. When I did her again. I did her makeup a second time. Okay. So that was not a killer. But gosh, so you, you learn, you learn from your mistakes. But it was a, a, a nice a full circle moment. But yeah, so, so I ended up doing the legend before I ended up working at Fashion Week itself. But, wow. you know, it's it's really about, you know, so I so I started working at, uh, um, at a television uh, station, working okay. there like part-time and then doing my full-time job at retail, at Holtz, okay. and then doing bridles on the weekend. Like I was like busy, busy, busy. And I thought at some point something's got to get. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what happened, you know? Okay. I got noticed by um, by the uh, headhunters over at uh, Bobby Brown. They wanted me to be the next global makeup artist, part of that new team they were creating, traveling okay. the world. And I, they flew me into New York and I met Bobby Brown and she had picked me to be on her team, to be on the global makeup artist team. And the rest is history. I mean, I never wow. looked back. I had the chance to, you know, travel everywhere and meet everybody. So that's how I got my into fashion because Bobby was doing a lot of fashion week shows uh, at the time. So I was just so excited to be part of that team and be at backstage at fashion week. And then when Bobby was not available, sometimes she would let me do a, a fashion oh. show. And then, you know, when I launched my brand, I continued in that vein and I continued doing fashion week shows and I moved to Asia also for that, you know, for a director of artistry, a position, and I ended up doing L Fashion Week. So, so wow. all these things kind of like happened. And I kind of like, I had that passion. So I kind of made sure that that was the direction I kept going. Because if somebody did not like working at Fashion Week, then they would have not pushed for that direction. And, you know, they would have probably ended sure. up in a different direction. Yeah. Right, right. So. With all those experiences and then getting to Fashion Week, working with Bobby Brown, all of those awesome achievements. What has been the hardest part of your journey as a makeup artist? You know, I got to say the hardest part is probably now being an owner of a brand Mm. because Mm -hmm. things are a lot more personal. Yeah. But if I look back as a makeup artist working for a big corporation at the time, We didn't talk about toxic environments. You know, we didn't talk about these kind of things. And and we didn't talk about, you know, things that were not, that are not acceptable today. You know, like I'm not, you know, I don't say I I had a Me Too experience, but I certainly had suffered my share of toxic environment. And also um, being a, a gay man in an industry where I got pointed out at some point, you know, like, for, you know, for the wrong reason. And mm-hmm. that stays with you. So, you know, like it, it, it leaves a bit of a bitter taste. And, you know, I will mm-hmm. always remember those people that made me feel that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I'll ever meet them again, but, you know, it's, it's made me stronger, but also I think today, if knowing what I know now, I would have probably spoken out for myself and I would have probably sure. gone to HR and did something about it. So, so on the corporate side, that toxicity definitely happened. There's like that, that chain of command, you know, like don't talk to somebody about me and I'm your boss. And that's so toxic. And I would, I don't miss those days. And with my brand, because I only deal with consultants, I don't have to have like, I'm the CEO. Like it's not about title. Like I'm the creator of Vail Cosmetics. Like that's really what I am. And I have a passion for it. I have great, two great partners, you know, Rick Monero, who handles the operation side and have Rick, and I have Parker Stini who handles sales and business development. And okay. we all work together to, you know, to get the yep. brand and the dream going. But, you know, <laughs> thanks to consultant, we can expand a little bit. But in terms of challenges, it's truly being the owner. And I take things a yeah. lot more to heart. It's more a lot more personal. And the pandemic was hard, you know, because, yeah. you know, it, it gave us a, a we it's, it's definitely 
uh, throwing a wrench in our expansion because we were going mm-hmm. up, 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 and then the pandemic mm-hmm. happened. And I think cosmetics kind of like, like we all had to be very, very um, innovative and, mm-hmm. and creative with how we were going to grow the business. Yep. And I think the biggest challenge just happened to me actually a few months ago, I, back in April, I, my account, my uh, Veil Cosmics Instagram account got hacked. So I lost I accessed my account, got disabled. I lost all 45,000 followers. That was a big blow, Kelly. Like I, I got to say, like I've lost my mojo for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, it took me 10 years to grow to over 45,000 followers mm-hmm. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And for like, you know, for one day to the next, losing all of that. And just the thought of having to start another account. And which yeah. I did, because you got to keep going. Um, mm-hmm. And having 500 followers on a new account was yeah. very <laughs> humiliating and disappointing mm-hmm. and discouraging. All For of sure. That. So For that sure. probably like probably like the biggest blow in 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 recent history, but also like an overall picture. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. And you know that third party with social media applications hard to control, right? It's yeah, yeah. You need it. It's there. You, you, it's you gone. It exactly. Yeah. So, so now I have a new sort of outlook on how to approach all of this. I okay. have now I have a backup account just mm-hmm. in case, <laughs> but uh, we're going our our mailing list and making sure that we're yep. in touch with the people that are following us as well, I'm not just relying on social media because yeah. I don't have control over that. Those are right. not my platforms, but I'm in charge of my website. I'm in charge of my email list. And yep. those are the things that we're really focused on to be able to communicate with our, our clients. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So we talked a little bit about Veil Cosmetics, but tell me about the brand and how the idea came to be. All right. Well, <laughs> I've always been known for my signature makeup style as being skin, glowing okay. skin, fresh mm. skin. That's always been, you know, some people, you know, there was a girl, she was like a brow girl. The other one mm-hmm. was like, you know, the lips and the other one was, I don't know, like we all had a, a thing, the, you know, eyeliner. Uh, I was always skin. And okay. I remember to call Bobby Brown and somebody, you know, repeated that to me and I forgot about that. But she said, Bobby Brown said, Sebastian does the best skin in the business. That's mm. when I started on her team, that's what she said. And I will always wow. thank her for that. Thank you, Bobby. Yes. And that's sort of like kind of like set me on my way. But I mean, to me, when I started makeup, Kelly, I always get inspired by someone's features, you know, model okay. or not, we all have different features mm-hmm. and the skin and how to work it and putting my fingers on the skin and understanding texture and what it's going to need in order to get that skin to look flawless and to look like skin. Because I love makeup because it helps skin to look at its best. Yeah. I don't want skin to look like makeup. Those are two different that's a things. Great point. <laughs> so that's a great that's, point. that's that's my experience. And working in the beauty and fashion industry, skin was always back in the early 2000s and all of the 2000s during fashion week and and even throughout, you know, even nowadays, you know, that the no makeup makeup. We didn't call it mm-hmm. no makeup makeup. We kind of did, but it was not a thing. It was about like we call it dewy skin, real skin, Mm -hmm. fresh skin or spare makeup. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was always being challenged when we were doing fashion week where we're making meeting with stylists and they were always so insistent on, you know, they would literally say like, I don't want to see makeup. I don't want makeup, but we could not do any makeup. So the trick was to use makeup and making it look like Ah. there was no makeup. That's how I hold my skin, my skills Mm -hmm. on, you know, getting the skin to look like there's mm-hmm. no makeup. And that's the most difficult part. Anybody like a five-year-old could put, you know, cake makeup on. Like anybody yeah. can do cake makeup, you know, any influencer that can do that. But <laughs> it's the it's the challenge to make it look like it's not there, but using the right makeup, understanding pigments, understanding undertones. Mm-hmm. That's how you achieve that. Understanding skin types, understanding skincare prep. We didn't use primers you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, like primers is a thing of the last, you know, 10 years, not even, right. you know, hmm. so we didn't have makeup, uh, you know, sprays to set makeup, you know, it means you have to use the right makeup for the right skin type so that it stays, you know, there's yeah. no such thing as, as setting makeup, you know, it's really about how you're layering everything so that it has like the perfect harmony so that it stays on, you know? So amazing. So that's I'm, how I got to veil, you know, like that yeah. signature, you know, lightweight makeup. Mm-hmm. And when I had the opportunity and I met, you know, my current business partner 
um, and we decided to launch a brand. It, it, it was really about finding the right name, coining the name so that it would make sense with the signature makeup yeah. that I did. So to me, veil and that weightless beauty, the superior textures that are sublime, that are not piling on, but it feels like you're not wearing anything. That's what veil means. It's it's that no makeup makeup that you have that really just refreshes you. And yep. if you don't want to wear makeup all over your face, keep good skin untouched and just apply, you know, a bit of concealer, a tinted moisturizer, a bit of foundation here and there. But if you have the right color, you don't have to apply it everywhere. And it, that's when the magic happens. And that's mm. what I was taught. And that's what I see in the fashion magazine. When I see the beautiful editorials, you know, you can have like the most beautiful cat eye or the brightest red lip, like neon. If the skin is impeccable, everything looks edgy and everything looks mm. cool. Everything looks cool. And that, that's the magic. And I would love if there are any makeup artists listening to the tease, learning or trying to hone their crafts. <laughs> get the skin as fresh and bare as possible so that whatever big brow you want to do or glitter on the cheeks or blush on the temples, it's always going to look cool, but choose one focus, okay. just one. one, you know, it's not eyes, lips and brows. Like it's just one and go big. Oof. So, so that's how they all <gasps> came about. <laughs> I love it. Dang. That passion is great. I love it. It's amazing. So tell me about the the different products that you offer. Like what was your first out the gate? Tell me about the product line as well. Great question. And thank you for asking. I, complexion centric brand. I started with my dream product. It was having 15 shades of a concealer called complexion mm. fix. And what does it do? It fixes the complexion, whether you want it to uh, be a concealer or you okay. prefer needing like a corrector color or you need it to be a bit brighter and using a, a highlighter color. So okay. having 15 colors, so I have porcelain, light, medium, tan, deep, and they all come in different pink undertone, neutral undertone or um, gold undertone. So I can really get all the different skin tones, different undertones mm. and really achieve whatever I need. So coming from the fashion week background or working in a fast paced, you know, behind the scene photo shoot for let's say glamour magazine, you don't have time to go back and forth between the set yeah. and your makeup station. You have to have like your tools with you. So for me, having complexion fix, having it all lined up and being able to see all my colors and say, okay, so this is my light. This is my porcelain. This is my, you know, deep. And then just going in and doing a little touch on the skin where needed and not mm. covering it up. That was my dream product. So that's why Complexion Fix awesome. was the product that I launched with so that I could do anything at all times, leave good skin untouched. And you have like, you know, you can hear the angels sing when you're, <laughs> once you're, you're done with, uh, with using a, a touch of Complexion Fix. And that's how I launched actually at New York Fashion Week. I did a, a couple of shows to launch with. And I, that's when I met pa Paris Hilton backstage and was able to hand her one of those little Complexion Fix and, and, and of course, when she left, she said, that's hot. And <laughs> I'm not making this up. I have that on camera. And, and, um, and my team, you know, that's all I gave them backstage to do skin. Okay. You know, I, wow. I, I said, you know, bring some skincare and all that, you know, in the town looks, I didn't do skincare. And then I had all 50 shades of complexion huh. fix. And that's how we did all of the models. And they all looked like super fresh. They looked like they were radiant. And truly that's how I started. And then I had, mm -hmm. uh, then I had the, the primer that came second. So primer for me is more than just primer. It has to hydrate the skin. That's why it's also a serum and it has to help with longevity of makeup. It has to blur a little bit because you know that's what we expect from primers, you know, to give mm -hmm. you a bit more perfection on the skin side, but I don't want it to be dry. So I want it to be water-based. I have mostly water-based products when it comes to complexion. And it's also a mixing base. So you can maybe use a, a lipstick that's a little greasier mix it a little bit with that primer mm. and create that perfect cheap tint that's not going to be sticky you know or mix a bit of your concealer with this and then you have a tinted moisturizer you know it's like wow. it's about yeah. multi-use multitasking veil is all about multitasking and on the go my packaging is always you know no caps falling off in your bag yeah. or you know it's, it's it's also airtight so you can travel and not having things exploding on you i'm sure it's happened to you Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah so and then uh, I came up with a foundation because everybody was asking for a foundation after I created the concealer so I had to take my time and and actually the inspiration was my primer 
sunset light mixed with complexion fix. And okay. I was on set one day and I created this beautiful texture. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the foundation that I need. This airy whipped texture that melts with the skin. And that's what created Sunset Skin Foundation. And the name Sunset, when you work in the business, you always have at some point a photo shoot that happens outdoors and you got to wait for the golden hour, <laughs> yeah. you know, the magic hour. And that way you don't need special effects. You don't need special light. The model just looks flawless or it's the perfect time for a selfie. So <laughs> that's where the, uh, the sunset reference comes from, you know, like it's just flawless skin at that point. And then I came Amazing. up on mat and then brushes and uh lip and cheek palette called velvet. So this is my entire family of, uh, of products. Very beautiful, very beautiful oh, packaging too, right? Thank you. I want it to be fun and uh, <laughs> and and catchy because when I launched, also there was a lot of black in in mm. uh, on all the shelves, and you know I wanted a little uh, a little color yeah. to you know just and I can always spot when I have a behind the scene photos on Instagram from the couple ah. of I can always see veil in the kit. I can always see it. I love it. That's great. So you're approaching your or celebrating your 10 year anniversary. Congrats. Yes. Thank you That's so a much. Milestone. Yes. I mean, yes, it, it happened so quick yet um, bit by bit. And yeah. I guess, yeah, 10 years. I never, Ooh. it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's a chunk of time. It is. It is. Um, so what is it like to see your idea come this far? And then a decade later, you're, you're killing it. Like, what's that like as a founder? You know, it's, it didn't happen overnight and it yep. still doesn't feel like I have succeeded or have arrived because I always dreamt big and I'm okay. just getting started to be honest. Mm. So okay. I really feel like Vail has, you know, bigger things coming and I'm, I keep creating and, and really the dream is to have like an, an entire assortment that yeah. would be great for any occasion any times and you know like I right now I feel you know I'm still missing a few categories and a few things that I have not gone to yet because I take my time as an indie brand it takes a while before you sure. know you launch something and before it gets a bit of popularity before it gets mm -hmm. word of mouth and it gets more known so I realized all of that at the beginning that's why we started with one product it took three years before I launched the next yeah. so so that we're taking our time and I know everybody even if I have a new launch and I'm new to them, they'll say like, what's next? So they will always <laughs> want something new. So I'll say, what's next? I said, the whole brand is new. So let's look <laughs> at it, shall we? Everybody wants the next launch and this and that. But, you know, I'm able to this day, Complexion Fix is still my bread and butter. It's my most sought after product. That's the one that I, you know, that's paying for everything, you know, in my life, my mortgage and, you know, my life and my travels and everything. And then, you know, and then the foundation is come, has caught up as well in, in, in popularity. And the automat that I launched over three years ago has also gone viral in the last year because of awesome. a couple of great influencers that I'm very thankful for their support. And they've decided to talk about it because they loved it. And that's what's different now is that, you know, yeah. with the viral trends, you know, if somebody loves your makeup, then it can overnight sort of become more yeah. popular. And mm -hmm. we didn't have that 10 years ago. So that's a great sort of new avenue that I've seen sort of progress in the last 10 years. And, and I'm hoping that it's going to continue that way. And, you know, we keep evolving with the time and making sure that, you know, the brand gets seen and resonates yeah. with the people yeah. that, and the fine, fine, it's people basically, you mm -hmm. know, like the complexion, no makeup, makeup, you've come to the right place. I love that. Um, so, you know, my co-host and I, Jeffrey Lennon, we talk a lot about on the podcast, how there are a lot, are a lot of celebrity backed cosmetic skincare brands, heck, you name it, brands out there, you know, and I can see your passion and desire and excitement and expertise in 25 years in the business creating this product line, how does Veil lend itself in comparison to some of those brands that a celebrity might be out there popping their name on, but we're not really sure the creation behind it. That's right. I think that's the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy that there's, you know, kids that are able to follow their, their idols, you know, like we all, you know, when you're like in your teenage years and early twenties, you're so happy to have like a role model that, you know, whatever they'll do, you'll just follow and you'll yeah. want to get a piece of, so that it makes you feel part of that excitement. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And there's a place for that. 
what differentiates a celebrity-based makeup line or beauty brand from a makeup artist-based brand is that I've actually done the work. I've been in yeah. the business for over 25 years. All of the ideas and all the products that come out are based of personal experiences, personal needs, personal um, innovations that I've seen that I needed, you know, because every idea that I get or everything that I perfect over the years is because of challenges that I've met throughout mm-hmm. my makeup, you know, application and experiences. And that's how I've learned, you know, I've learned my best tip from my challenges. If something didn't work, then I had to make it work. And, and I remember, you know, a long time ago, technology was not exactly there when it came to textural makeup. And that's why I'm so mm-hmm. glad that now I'm able to offer that with Veil. And that was, that's how it came to fruition as well, to be able to offer those superior textures that would make you forget about the makeup that you wear. Mm. So that was not there. And the challenge that I had was always to mix skincare with makeup so that I could create the texture that I needed so that my client could just like forget about what I put on her face and just focus on maybe the acting or, or Mm -hmm. the interview that she Mm -hmm. was going to do, or just the modeling that they were going to be doing on the runway that they'll be walking on. And that's the difference with a pro makeup artist brand based. Yeah. And there's a true story behind everything. If you ask any of those celebrities, what made them create a specific product, they're going to give you some, you know, spiel Good about you know, a, a marketing yeah. spiel, yeah. but it's not going to be a true story. And I can, you can always tell, you know, when there's a true story or not. And, and, and the difference between a professional makeup brand like mine and those professional, those, those celebrity makeup artists, those, those celebrity uh, brand is that, you know, I don't rely on a team that I've scouted around the world, you know, to right. put together my dream Vision, project. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, everything that's created is with, by me, I work with a chemist that I created all of my products with. And I tell him what my vision is. I have benchmarks that I can enjoy him. So comparison. And I know from the get-go, the ingredients that I don't want. I know the textural story that I want to say. I'm, I'm the one that decides the packaging. You know, celebrities don't do any of that. You know, maybe mm-hmm. they'll they'll have a little say. They approve everything, but it's mm-hmm. been, the work's been done for yeah. them. So, you know, if that matters to you, then, you know, then, you know, follow those those. Paul, those makeup artist brands that are out there, there's several great ones. It, I'll tell you what, it matters to us at the T's because we are all about the professional. Thank so you. I for love us, you there is no, there is no substitution for experience and, you know, hard work, dedication, enthusiasm for the brand that you're creating. So we're standing squarely in your corner. <laughs> Thank you. Music to my ear. But as I said, this, this place, there's room for everybody. Sure. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, my creativity will never get taken away from me. And while mm-hmm. I have the budget of a celebrity brand that's backed by whoever an investor, no, I will never have that. I might not have that, that wide audience that they'll have from the get go. I might not get the, you know, front of the line meeting to a big retailer. But I'm doing it my way and I'm very yeah. contempt with what I'm accomplishing because I'm extremely realistic and I I know what I can do. And I, I just have to push harder if I want to continue and pierce through the noise and yep. I will prevail. So I'm, I'm not worried. Mm-hmm. I have no doubt. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Um, no okay. Doubt. So I know you mentioned that you're maybe not a fan of when people ask what's next, but dare I ask? What's next? <laughs> you can ask what's <laughs> next. Absolutely. No, I, I'm re- I was referring to literally like when you're with buyers and, and, and oh, yeah. like your, your brand is brand new when they, they already ask like, what's next? It's like, well, we haven't even touched, you know, half of it. But in terms of like, what's new? Like, I mean, I have a launch coming up in the new year. So I might look to see as to what it's going to be, but it's an okay. expansion, a deeper, a deeper expansion into the complexion category. So I'm super excited about that. It's going to, you know, really, really resonate with the Veil fan. And I think we will find also new, new fans out there and new, new ears and eyes on, on Veil Cosmetics because of that. And I mean, it's been, it's been quite a challenge to create or to have product development during the, the, the pandemic because Mm -hmm. it slowed the process and some, some, um, uh, brand partners or developers have also changed their way of working and they've also made things more expensive. Also, Mm -hmm. they've also uh, 
um, increased the minimum order quantities. So for those of you that are unfamiliar sure. with creating cosmetics is when you're, let's say, launching a lipstick, you have to have, let's say, a minimum of 10,000 of that specific color okay. created because the size of the jar that it's going to go and get mixed into is a minimum, you know, let's yeah. say a uh, hundred uh, gallons, you know, like yeah. you have to have that minimum quantity. So when you're a very small indie brand, that could be an impediment towards your goal. So you don't want to create product that will sit on the shelf and you'll have to throw out. So that's yeah. our reality. So the pandemic has made that a bit more difficult. And so we had to change partner a couple of times yep. when creating the uh, the uh, the product, but we found the great, the great partner and it's, you know, right. back, we're back home in our, in our backyard with, with, uh, with crew product production. So that's, that's exciting. So we have a new, uh, a new product coming up, but uh, that's going to be in the new year to celebrate our 10th year anniversary. Right. And um, when else? I mean, in, in terms of the makeup industry, I'm so glad that we're having a no makeup makeup moment mm -hmm. because before the pandemic, it was about more is more. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody was yep. sculpting and highlighting and, you know, adding blush here and eyeliner up to there. And the eyebrows were like, woo, like really, really sculpted. And now things have like softened and yeah. and because of the pandemic, people wearing less makeup. And I love that return of the pendulum, but there will always be a need for that real makeup because let's face it, women working in professional environment, whether you stay at home or you want to go out there, like there's always going to be a need for like a pair down moment, or you might not have yeah. time to do a full beat. You know, yeah. time is also of the essence that if you only have five minutes to do your makeup, you're going to grab complexion fix to- yep. It sounds like it. You won't have time to do, you know, <laughs> contour and highlight and all of this. And, and I think the people that are looking now at makeup, even those influencers that were the ones behind that big trend of, you know, really bright eyeliner mm -hmm. and the very square brows, and they're all looking at that makeup now and they're all like a little cringing. So, you know, we all get there, whether you're Generation yep. Z or, uh, you know, a million of <laughs> <laughs> It comes back around. You're right. It's a pendulum. <laughs> exactly. So, so I'm really enjoying the, uh, the no makeup makeup moment that awesome. we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. out there and that glowy skin, that fresh uh, makeup. And it's also fun to see the latest, you know, the fun little techniques, not that they stick, but it's, I'm always intrigued to see like how somebody thinks that they, you know, they can lift the eye by doing a mm -hmm. certain shape of concealer. It doesn't work for everybody because everybody has different eye shape. That's what you need to for understand, sure. but it's, it's entertaining to me and I'm here for it. You know, <laughs> I love it. I love it. This was such a pleasure. Ugh, I, your your enthusiasm is just like busting through the Zoom. So I like it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kelly. It's always a pleasure talking to other passionate uh, beauty aficionados uh, and, and professionals. So thank you. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the T's quick takes. And so okay. this is a little a little back and forth, if you will. And we need your opinion, your take. So the first one is, what is a quote that you love? A quote that I love. Mm, let me think. Um, well, I always say it's in the stars, mm. meaning that it, it leaves it leaves everything up to the possibilities. You know, dream big, okay. it may happen. So it's actually um, uh, on my personal uh, social media profile. It's it says it's in the stars, and I, I don't know who that comes from, but I I didn't make that up, but it's a quote that's out there me it, it, it leads to the possibilities of meaning open yourself to the moment yeah. and things might yeah. happen or dream big you know and and things believe in your in in your in your potential i love it that's very inspiring thank you what was your last google search my last google <laughs> search let me go and see in my uh, i probably googled the t's <laughs> <laughs> My last we'll take all your google searches uh, over here <laughs> so the t's is definitely what i i searched uh last <laughs> and uh what did i search for this morning um there are um there, there are elections happening in my neck of the woods. So I probably Googled uh, a couple articles regarding the upcoming election. So I want to be an informed yeah. citizen. Of, okay. You know, why I'm going to go and where, <laughs> who I'm going to vote for. All right. I love that. Um, what is the cringiest trend that you've ever tried? Cringiest trend <laughs> that I've ever tried. Well, there was a moment when people were trying to apply 
uh, was it concealer or highlighter or blush? And they were using all sorts of tools, you know, like some people were using a spoon, <laughs> some people were using a fork. Like that was cringe. <laughs> And I, I, I didn't crazy. try it myself, but I mean, <laughs> for the eyes, you know, yes, yeah, good old scotch tape, you know, or like a, a business card mm-hmm. that works. But mm-hmm. then, you know, just to get eyeballs on your, on your uh, content, on yeah. your content mm-hmm. start using a spatula or, you know, whatever it's, that was yeah. cringy. Just a no, just a hard no. Yeah. Um, what animal are you most like? Mm, that's a very good question. I love, I love animals. Uh, I'd like to think that maybe I'm, I'm like a bird because okay. birds, because I, I have a little, uh, a little parrot. Uh, it's a okay. conure, a little oh. green cheek conure. His name is Taco, Takiki <laughs> for the, uh, the intimates. Um, <laughs> and I see a lot of, of similarities in the sense that okay. they are always on their toes like mm-hmm. a little nervous, mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. not always trusting. Mm-hmm. But when you get to be in their proximity, they're, they're so special and they make you feel like there's only you that matters. And you feel oh. like you're, you're lucky to be in their person. Yeah. Not that I feel like people are lucky to be, I feel like I, I, when people get to know me, then they, you know, men, mm-hmm. they appreciate who I am instead of like, just feeling like beyond you know, the exterior that like there might be like beautiful feathers and all that. But when you get to know that little bird intimately, you know, as a <laughs> bird owner, because our bird is, is also free flighted. So oh. flies around the house everywhere. Oh, wow. And we call him up and he comes and he's got Aww. his little personality. And I, like, I, I, I'd like to think that I, I'm a bird like that, where, you know, I love that. you're free. And I, I love that, that the flighting part, you know, birds are so special that way. Like I, I would love that. That's my dream being able to, to fly don't you have dreams sometimes when you fly and it's like you don't want the dream to end what would you it's, mm-hmm. it's just yeah magical yeah oh that was a good question for you good answer yeah um last question what is some advice for those who want to make it to the top of our industry my advice to somebody that wants to make it in, in the industry whether it's you know beauty at large is Again, dream big. Don't take no for an answer. It's it, it might be a no for now, but it's not a yeah. no forever. All right, and that's great. Don't let people, you know, the vision of people or their vision or their limited version or vision uh, spoil your own mm. vision. Remain true to you. And of course, when you work along the way, you have to work for other people, or other brands, yeah. or other. You know, you have to work in partnerships. And that's cool. It's not like, you know, I'm being real, you know, like you hear that all the time. Like, why well, have to say what I, my truth, like I'm being real, you know, like it's not all truth that needs to be said. You have to, you know, maybe sometimes just you know, there's a time and place for that truth to come out, but mm-hmm. so that you can get to that place where you're going to evolve. So don't take no for an answer, but know when it's time to, you know, maybe put your foot down and, and, you know, try, knock on another door. You know, there's yeah. one door that's not open for you. There's another door and there will be, you no. Know, you just need one door. Just one and door. It will, uh, and it will change everything. So that's, that's my biggest take home after 25 years in, in the business. That's and I have amazing. to remind myself sometimes, Kelly. So Sebastian, you know, write that down. And <laughs> <laughs> we've got you recorded no. saying it now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, Sebastian, what a pleasure. Where can all of our volume up fans find more about Veil Cosmetics? They can find everything, of course, at veilcosmetics.com. That's where you're going to have the latest and the, uh, the nicest and the funnest. And, the, you know, we, we have all sorts of great content. We refresh everything all the time. Um, and I, I actually insist now to have people subscribe to my mailing mm-hmm. list because I'm not going to pull it your airways, but that's where you're going to get <laughs> access to like the latest deals. We okay. would like to throw a little specials here and there or what's coming up and, or maybe like my latest blog and I keep in close contact, but I, I'm not here to email you every week, you know, like we're starting with once a month now. So it's, you know, I know it might not be enough for people that work in marketing, but I am a, a consumer as well. I don't want people to feel like they're being attacked every day by an email, <laughs> you know, from marketing. And of course, Facebook, uh, Instagram, it's Vail Cosmetics. We're on TikTok as well. I create content yeah. on TikTok, Veil Cosmetics. Um, and we're also, you know, if you love shopping on Amazon, find Veil Cosmetics on Amazon. We're there as well. 
All right. Amazing. I love to see it. Well, thank you so much for your time, for your energy, your passion. It was incredible to meet you and to get to know you. It was a pleasure talking with you, Kelly. (laughs) It was a pleasure, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me.